Hello guys, welcome to Deep's Anatomy. In a previous video, we have learned about a part of the particular region like sternal notch and clavicle and all about clinical anatomy. Today, I gonna cover a part of the particular region that is called to be as a breast. So, breast is an important structure present in the particular region and it's a rudimentary in the male. As we know, and it's a fully developed in a female, we say it's a mammary gland. Accessory organ of the female reproductive system provides nutrition to the newborn. It may be flat, conical, periform, and pedunculus. So it is an accessory organ in the female reproductive system, and uh, maybe it's a nutrition for a newborn. Not maybe it's a necessary nutrition for a newborn. Divisions of a breast. Wait, guys, I'm gonna show you some. Uh, I like a picture that can you can easily undermine what is a lateral, what is a lower, and what is a medial part or quadrant of the breast here as we see here it's a upper inner quadrant and it's a lower inner quadrant and it's a this is a tail and upper outer quadrant and this is lower outer quadrant in this diagram they have divided on the basis of position because it's a upper and these two are lower and this is a tail and this whole part is composed of adipose tissue and fat you know and uh, after that, this is a um, there is a foramen, foramen of the linger, and it's a it's a tail, it's the tail of the whole breast of uh, or a mammary mammary gland. And uh, in my diagram, I'm gonna show you this position is divided on the basis of uh, the upper lateral on the lateral and middle position. These are two are uh, upper lateral position. This is the upper medial quadrant. This is lateral. Lower lateral quadrant, this is a lateral medial quadrant. You, know, you can see uh, tail of axillary spines, foramen of a langer is here. The areola of the nipple, this is whole part is the areola of nipple and it's all composed of the fat. And second, I'm going to tell you about that is a retromammary space. What is retromammary space? Retromammary space is a pectoral fascia, uh, is a separated from the pectoral fascia by loose areolar tissue called retromammary space. So this is a space that will be separated from the pectoral fascia, which is a, a part of the pectoral region, pectoral region, and in this it uh, provides a flexibility to a breast. So because of retromammary space, the breast can move freely on a pectoral fascia. Now second is a skin, is you know, skin is the largest or organ of our body. It covers the gland present of the skin. So this is a gland that which uh, that the skin covers a gland, it's said to be as a mammary gland. We know that breast is a whole is a mammary gland. So it's the conical projection present below the pectoral region, center of the nipple, the fourth intercostal space, and tenth far from the mid axillary line. So this is a conical projection. And uh, below the pectoral region, center of the nipple, at the fourth intercostal space, it's a, uh, we know what is the intercostal space? It's the space between the ribs. So it at the uh, it's the position we can see is a nipple at the fourth intercostal space and ten centimeter far from mid axillary line. So mid axillary line simply as a, we know mid axillary line is a, like a anterior and posterior in between the anterior and posterior axillary lines. There is a mid axillary line. But I'm gonna show you picture. So here you soon see axillary fossa. This is anterior axillary line. This is the posterior axillary line, and this is the mid axillary line. So this is all about the mid axillary line and the, about axilla. And uh, now nipple contains fifty to twenty lactiferous ducts, and it contains circular and longitudinal muscles. It is a some sweat gland, some sebaceous gland. We know that the sweat glands, what are sebaceous glands and what are sweat glands. So it is a lactiferous duct. So these are the, are the part of the breast. So this contains a uh, milk that is uh, during secret during the lactation when the mother is pregnant. So margin of areola, we found the sebaceous gland on the margin of the areola that uh, areola connective tissue around the nipple is said to be as a sebaceous gland. We found some sebaceous gland here. At the time of pregnancy, we found montogomatic tubercles at the margin of the areola. This is the early sign of the pregnancy. We see some protuberance of uh, uh, like for oily secretion of the gland prevent the uh, producing from the lactation. The oily secretion it's uh, prevent a uh, lactation. So this is a montogomatic tubercles and areola and nipple are divided of hair. In a females, we see we don't see hairs, but in males we see hairs. So that's why areola and nipple are divided of hairs. 
second i'm going to tell you about the parenchyma parenchyma is another like a layer of a breast or a breast is said to be the parenchyma it's composed of tubulo alveolar gland uh, tubulo because it's a compound tubular alveolar gland it's composed of tubulo and alveoli so it's said to be as a tubulo alveolar gland it's a modified sweat gland we know that it's the early we, we, we find sweat gland and then it's formed to be as a tubulo alveolar gland it consists of the 50 to 20 lobes each lobe consists of alveoli lobes are called lactiferous ducts and these lobes are only called to be as a lactiferous ducts the dilation of lactiferous ducts on to be as a uh, anterior side is said to be as a lactiferous sinus we see here i'm going to show you a diagram like uh, you can see that these are the lactiferous sinus this is a nipple this is a lactiferous ducts this is this is lactiferous ducts is a lactiferous sinus and this whole is a suspensory ligament these are suspensory ligaments which are uh, uh, which may be helpful in a, uh, in a flexibility of the part of the breast and this is the retromemma space that I told you earlier that's a uh, flexibility for the flexibility of that's a uh, space between the pectoral fascia it is the pectoral fascia and uh, it's a uh, pectoral fascia and the breast and all the parenchyma you can see it's a uh, retromemma space suspensory ligament second I'm gonna tell you about the stroma what is the stroma a supporting framework of the memory gland it's a completely framework of a memory gland fibrous stroma forms on a septa called to the suspensory ligaments of the cooper so fibrous on this um, stroma forms a septa set to suspensory ligaments of the ear these are the suspensory ligaments so it's a part of the stroma so it's said to be as a, a cooper because it was discovered by cooper blood supply blood supply of a mammary gland so blood supply of mammary gland is done by these acromyothoracic artery superior thoracic artery lateral thoracic artery and posterior thoracic artery and internal thoracic artery so these artery and the internal thoracic artery passes from here and the posterior it's like to be in posterior position set to be as a posterior thoracic artery and it's said to be as a lateral position set to be as a lateral thoracic artery and these whole arteries passes from axilla set to be as a axillary artery so uh, it's said to be as an intermediate it's said to be as a lateral artery it's said to be as a uh, medial artery so superior thoracic artery this is the whole about the blood supply of the mammary gland second we see here now supply so now supply now supply by anterior and lateral cutaneous branches the fourth to sixth intercostal nerves so this is said to be as a like intercostal nerves we see here the nerves which are passing from intercostal spaces are said to be the intercostal nerves these may be position we can say anterior and lateral cutaneous branches of the four to six intercostal nerves. Nerves do not control the secretion of the milk. This is the point that the nerves do not control the secretion of the milk. It's it's a it controls the all sensory sensory like uh, all the sensory nerves or sensation of the mammary gland. It controls all these parts. Secretion is controlled by the prolactin hormone. We know that the prolactin hormone is responsible for secretion of uh, milk and prolactin is situated in the part anterior of the hypophysis cerebri. So prolactin is situated in the hypophysis of cerebri and uh, lymphatic drainage as we know about the lymph, uh, lymph uh, lymphatic system and uh, uh, lymphatic system and lymphatic vessels so there is presence of some uh, lymphatic vessels or can be said to be as uh, lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels so IMP because breast carcinoma spreads along a lymph nodes the important point is because that the carcinoma is not cancer it's maybe the adenoid cancer we can say the gland cancer is uh, spread on the in the mainly in the lymph nodes and the lymphatic vessels so if we divide the lymph nodes there are lateral axillary on the basis of position we can see lateral axillary there is an epical there is a, an anterior axillary supraclavicular parasternal nodes or intermammary and central axillary and posterior axillary now deep if i go about lymphatic vessels lymphatic vessels there are two type of lymphatic vessels superficial lymphatic and a deep lymphatic so drain the skin over the breast except for the nipple and areola like uh, if uh, you have heard about uh, why do we 
do massage and also it's all about the drainage of the lymphatic fluid so it's all about the drainage of the lymphatic fluid that which is a main superficial lymphatics drain a skin over the breast to the axilla it means the it uh, drains the lymphatic fluid to the axilla except areola and midline deep lymphatic uh, deep deep lymphatics are uh, the drainage of the parenchyma of the breast it's all drain is lymphatic fluid to the parenchyma some important points about the breast 75% of not breast it's about the lymph vessels 75% of the lymph from the breast drains into the axillary nodes it means 75% of the fluid the lymph lymphatic fluid drains into the axillary nodes and 20% into the anterior thoracic thoracic nodes like uh, these are positions like anteriorly the thoracic nodes are present by 20% of the fluid goes 5% in the posterior intercostal nodes plexus of the lymph nodes is present deep to the areola which is called sub areolar plexus of sapin so there is a formation of the plexus as we know that there is a presence of some nerve plexus uh, like uh, a brachial plexus we can see on the basis of we divide here and on the basis we can say this is a sub areolar plexus of sapin so there is a superficial as i told you earlier this is a superficial this is a sub areolar plexus plexus so this is said to be as a sub areolar plexus of sepe sepe is a name of the scientist the discoverer now there is the development of the breast the breast develops from the ectodermal region from milk line or line of shoes shoes is the name of scientist the name of scientist so the the breast develops from the milk line line of the shoes appears during the fourth width of intravitreal and uh, it's like uh, uh, the line th the line of shoes is appears on a fourth width of intravitreal lights in the, in the embryonic life it appears on the fourth week breast gland is ectodermal and stroma is a mesodermal as we divide on the basis of the origin the breast is ectodermal and stroma is a mesodermal origin be remember do remember uh, growth of the mammary gland is stimulated by the oestrogen hormone. So the growth, the development of the mammary gland is stimulated by the oestrogen hormone. Allovaric secretion is stimulated by the prolactin from the cerebral hypophysis. Anomalies of the breast. The simple and the easy way to uh, to learn about the anomalies of the breast is like mastia. It means breast and the thalia is meant nipple. So amastic it means absence of the breast, athelia it means absence of nipple and polymastia is a super numerated breast. It means uh, many many numerated we can see uh, small small breast we found is said to be the polymastia super numerated. Polythelia it means the super numerated nipples small small nipples we found on the mammary gland we see. And gynecomastia is development of the breast in males is the most common thing. And now I want to tell you about a uh, stology of a breast what is the stology of the breast in histology of breast we learn about the structure of glandular elements we see some differences like before puberty and be uh, and between the puberty and first pregnancy there is some difference like before puberty we see entirely ducts are present before puberty we see entirely ducts are present it means that before uh, puberty we may found many ducts and between the puberty and first pregnancy there's a proper alveolar ducts are few or absent it means that uh, like after pregnancy or first pregnancy there are less amount of a uh, ducts or fewer alveolic ducts are present bulk of a breast consists of connective tissue and fatty widely separated by the gland for elements so the breast consists of a tissue said to be as a fat like completely separated by the glandular elements. So I gonna divide this is a non-secretory mammary gland, this is a secreting. It means like this is a before puberty, this is after puberty. So non-secretion of estrogen and progesterone. There is no secretion of any type of hormone. Secretion of estrogen, progesterone, there is secretion of the progesterone and estrogen because these are secreting hormones. These are secreting mammary glands and decrease in number of alveoli as we as I written here there is in just a few or absent and they decrease in number of alveoli and increase in number of alveoli 
Alveoli are lined by the cuboidal epithelium. Alveoli are lined by the columnar epithelium surrounded by the myoepithelial cells. There is a change in the in the secreting, the non-secreting to secreting because uh, uh, before puberty we see that the uh, composed of the cuboidal epithelium alveoli are lined by the cuboidal epithelium, but after the puberty or after uh, the, when the mammary glands start secreting, it's uh, completely covered by the columnar epithelium or surrounded by the myoepithelial cells. So there is a no secretion and there is a secretion. So there are two types of secretions. As I see here, this is the types of secretion are the lipids and proteins. The, the secretion of lipids is apocrine and mirocrine. We know which apocrine in which the secretion, the apical part goes out and in a mirocrine, it's like a different kind in the, the shedded part goes out. So now the nipple and areola. The areola is a pigmented part and nipple is covered by the cardinous stratified squamous epithelium. If I gonna tell you about the cardinous stratified epithelium, it's a, it's a completely covered with the cardinous uh, keratin, sorry, it's a completely covered with the keratin, keratin and said to be as the cardinous stratified, stratified squamous epithelium. It contains circular and longitudinal muscles, as I told you earlier, nipple has a rich nerve supply and provide with a sensory receptor settling. Yeah, I see. Nipple has a rich nerve supply and provide with the sensory receptor. Nipple has a rich nerve supply for the sensory, not for the secretion of the milk and provide with sensory receptor for suckling. It's meant for suction. Okay. Pigmented skin around the nipple is called to as an areola and it gets a darken after pregnancy. After pregnancy, the melanin secrets and the, the areola gets darker and darker. Enlargement of sebaceous gland called to as a tubicle of the montgomery. Areola is a devoid of hair. I told you earlier. Now some additional information. I see here is a premenstrual phase breast enlargement to the hydration of the connective tissue. It means in the premenstrual phase there is an engorgement of uh, uh, the breast due to uh, due to the hydration of the connective tissue. In male, the duct is rudimentary and represented by the solid coats. In a male, if I talk about the breast, it's a it's a rudimentary and it's uh, represented by solid coats. Resting phase is the avascular zone containing fibroblast. If uh, the resting phase comes, there is an avascular zone containing fibroblast. If I go through the clinical anatomy, the clinical anatomy, I have told you earlier that the most of the uh, the breast are mostly affected by the cancer. So the main the main node for the cancer is said to be the stenal node. The first lymph node draining the tumor ring area is called to be as a stenal node. It's a type of uh, the lymphatic nodes present on the superficial lymphatics. And the upper and outer breast is a frequent site of the carcinoma. We can see that the upper and outer, the outer quadrant maybe it's a lateral or it's medial. It's a first site of the carcinoma. Incisions on the breast are usually made readily to avoid the cutting of the lactiferous ducts. Incisions are made readily because uh, if we do incisions like un invariably, then maybe the cutting of the lactiferous duct so may ha uh, harm the mammary gland so we in so we incision radially cancer cells may go inside the suspensory ligament and may fix so uh, may fix the retromammary space and it can affect whole mammary gland obstruction of the superficial lymph may on oedema give rise to the uh, you do orange disease is kind of a disease so the superficial may swelling of a, a superficial lymph may give rise to a p2 orange like color okay. because of communication of a superficial lymphatics between the two breast may spread cancer because of superficial lymphatics if the superficial uh, lymphatics connection is established they may spread cancer because of communication of the lymph vessels and those in the abdomen cancer may spread may be spread on uh, the other pike like abdomen like in other organs like liver and every every organ so because of only the lymph vessels it can spread mammogram may reveal cancerous mass it's a uh, like uh, a representation like x-ray we see mammogram and mastectomy is a surgical removal of the breast it's a completely removal of the breast during the surgicals during the surgeries or in maybe the 
the carcinoma spreads uh, in everywhere and it uh, chances to cut or to remove the breast such as a mastectomy, such a surgical removal of the breast. Thank you guys.